my name is Martha Zink and I'm with Salient Consulting and this is a video in the series Delve into FileMaker 12. Now here I'm going to focus on the execute SQL function which is new to FileMaker 12 and it is in my opinion one of the most powerful things that comes with this version in FileMaker. It's fast, it's flexible, and I think we're really going to see a lot of things done with this one function. So let me show you an example of how I'm using it. Here I have a main menu and you'll see that there are six buttons on the layout and if I click on any of them on the right hand side I get buttons that apply to that one category so there are order related buttons, cost sheet related buttons, quote related buttons and so on. What may not be obvious is that these aren't actually just buttons if I jump into layout mode these are actually this is actually a portal so I'm actually grabbing data from somewhere and manipulating it. Now what I have in the background is another table in the same file called main menu and you'll see that there's a category, a description, and a sort. Now if we look at the category field you'll see that if we were to look at a unique list of these categories we'd actually be getting the exact same list as the six buttons on the main menu page. However in FileMaker 11 and prior it's actually kind of hard to just get a unique list of categories and actually display them like this. So this is where the execute SQL function becomes really really powerful. Now I want to talk a little bit about how a SQL query can be written. So let me create something in the data viewer here. So here's the expression execute SQL. Now two of the things that you're going to be asked for are how you want to separate the fields and how you want to separate the rows or the records. If you put in double quotes it's actually going to give you the default so I'm going to go ahead and do that. The default for a field separator is a comma and the default for a row separator is a return. Now here's where we actually write the query. So I'm going to just put my parentheses here just to make it easy and I like to space this out a lot because it's, it can be a lot of text. So it's a select statement and the format looks like this. Select field 1, field 2, as many fields as you want from and then the table occurrence. Now what's cool about it being from a table occurrence is that you can actually have external tables so you can be connected to external files and actually still use this execute SQL on that data. So in this example if I wanted to say select the category and the description from the, the table occurrence called main menu and you'll see that down here we get a list very similar to what's over in this table, right? We're going to get the category and the description and I can go in here and add the sort if I really wanted it as well. So I can get quite the variety of, of data. Now there are things I can do in here like I can say where and a where is almost like a find clause. So I can say where the category equals customer. So now I'm only going to get values where the category is equal to customer and there's a lot of flexibility as to what you can do there. Now I'm sure I'll go into that in other examples but I don't really use that in this main menu example. What I do use is something slightly different. And there are two things that I'm going to show you here. The first thing I need is distinct. So here I say select distinct category from main menu. So instead of getting every single category, I'm only getting a unique list of those values. So that's feature one that I want to talk about. The other thing I want to talk about is the, the order in which they sort. When you use the distinct function, it actually sorts alphabetically, but you'll notice that over here on the left hand side, I, they're not alphabetical. They're actually sorted based on this sort field in the main menu table. So that when I write my statement, I can say select the distinct categories from main menu and order by and then I can choose what field I want them ordered by. So when I hit evaluate now you'll see that I get customer then schedule then orders and so on and so forth. So I get my data in the right order. So when I open up my database and I open up the main menu what's happening is exactly what we just wrote. A global variable is getting set to that exact same SQL query. So select distinct category from main menu order by sort. Once that's done the big question is how am I actually displaying that data here in a portal, right? Because a portal is dependent on a table of data. Well, this is based off of the virtual list technique. So I'm going to jump over to a table called temp. Now, the most important part of this table is this number field. 
And what it is, is it's just a field that's a number field. It's called number in this case. And it has a number from one to something. Now, I don't, I didn't know how many options I would have. So I played it safe and made 30. You'll see that some of these are empty because there, there isn't that much data in my array, in my global variable. The magic to this virtual list technique is that this value field, in this case, is actually looking at the global variable, which in this case is called main menu. And it's pulling a given value. And how it knows what value to pull is based on this number. So this is value 1, this is value 2, this is value 3, and so on. So if we look at the calculation for this temp, tab temp table, it's an unstored calc, which is important to know. The other thing is that we're using the get value function. So pretty straightforward. Get the value out of the main menu global variable. And I want you to grab this number. So depending on what's in the number field, that's what you're going to grab. So if the, if the number is 3, you're going to get the third value in the main menu global variable. So this virtual list technique is pretty simple, but very, very flexible because now we're using global variables to hold the data that we want to show. So going back to my main layout, what's happening here is when I click on a button, a script is running that is grabbing whatever, whatever that value is, in this case, schedule or orders. And I'm setting another global variable, in this case, mm category, to that data. So when I click on something like cost sheet, and I jump into layout mode, there's a little portal back here. And it's going to filter portal records. Now you'll notice that this is actually coming from that main menu table, which is that layout here in the background. So filter portal records. And I'm saying the value in that main menu relationship, that category, has to be equal to whatever is in the global variable mm category. And then we refresh the screen, and it actually updates so it shows us uh, what we want to see. So this is just one implementation on doing this. I think there's a ton of different ways that we're going to use Execute SQL. Here I'm using it for interface purposes, but I do think that it makes for a very clean interaction and it shows the ability to use the distinct capabilities that comes with the SQL query. So hopefully you'll be able to use something like this and I will definitely be providing more examples of Execute SQL. Thanks.